Hello everybody. Is everybody well today? Oh, I am so glad to hear that. And me? Oh yes, doing absolutely two thumbs up. We have blue skies and sunshine outside here in England today. We have a temperature of 25 Celsius. That's 77 in Fahrenheit. And next week, the forecasters are boasting and promising that it's going to be 33 degrees Celsius. That, that's 92 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, that's going to be warm. So that's the reason why I'm in my summer official Ryanair 186 uniform. <laughs> So where are we going to go to today? Oh, right, good question. Well, let's see. Last week I was in South America. The week before that I was in the Caribbean. The week before that I was also in South America. Well, this week I'm going to be in North America. Now, Miranda Luciana wrote me and she said, Father Dane, oh, that's me. My name is Miranda and I live in Spokane, Washington, and I like flying to Seattle. Sounds like she's a pilot. So I was wondering if you could do a flight between Spokane, K-G-E-G, -E and Seattle, which of course is K-S-E-A. She said, it would be tremendous fun. Thanks so much, Miranda. Well, how could I refuse? How could I refuse indeed? So let's go ahead and do that. As a matter of fact, I have been into uh, Spokane Airport. I think once I went into the International Airport. Most of the time I flew into Phelps Field, which is about 18 miles to the east. I worked for a company that was based at that time anyway, out of Orange County Airport. Orange County Airport is Los Angeles' general vicinity. And uh, the company would want me to fly up to Spokane and then by car over to Coeur d'Alene where they had their business interests. Now, Coeur d'Alene is just across the border in Idaho. And you know that, Miranda. So that's my exposure to Spokane flying in and out of Phelps Field. So it's going to be rather fun to fly out of the International Airport after all of these years. Now, I did check, and I found that there were Delta does the route, but also Alaska Airlines. And I picked Alaska Airlines because they have 737s. Delta are using Airbuses or other equipment. So I'm following the Alaska Airlines... <clears throat> Flight 403. So that's Alaska Airlines Flight 403 or AS403. If you put that in, it'll bring it up on Flight Aware. AS403. I've got some wonderful scenery for Seattle. Now, Seattle Airport scenery is made by Driswicky Design. Beautiful design work. However, I tried and could not find any airport scenery for um, KGEG Spokane. So I looked high and low and I'm using P3D version 5.2 and there is nothing out there. I did find some freeware, but it doesn't work very well. So I'm going to be using the default scenery for P3D on this particular flight. 
Sorry, it's not the best, but it's all that I could do. Now the area, just in case uh, you want to know, now Miranda knows this and I know this, but the rest of you may not know, but there are three airports right there in Spokane, four miles to the west of um, Spokane International is Fairchild Air Force Base. So there's a lot of activity going in and out there. And then it's 18 miles to the east where Phelps Field is located. And that's the one I used to go in and out of. So this is going to be a busy airspace. Don't know how the simulator is going to pick up all of the traffic. It'll be interesting. And well, we shall certainly find out, shan't we? So Miranda, are you ready? You've done this before, so you know that we need to go into pre-flight. Anything can happen on this route. It's not that far, but still, you have to make a flight plan and you have to check the weather, don't you? Oh, yes. So let's go into pre-flight and let's see what we can find out. Well, here we are in Flight Aware and we're looking at this particular airline, Alaska Airlines Flight 403. There you can see the designator AS403. This particular one arrived over 15 hours ago at gate N11 in Seattle. It left gate C30. Now, whether we're going to be able to match that exact gate is another matter because we're not using good um, airline scenery. We're using the default, so we may not get a match on that, but we'll find out. And looking at the flight, here you can see its departure and it's a straight run across and then nips down and then does this loop in order to make its approach. At the 26,000 feet was its cruising altitude. So we'll see whether we get the same as that. Looking at a flight radar 24, this is the departure of that last, uh, last flight. And you can see, here's where it came from, C30. And that's in that little extension and it looked like it departed on runway 21. Whether we have the same departure, I don't know. Alaska Airlines came into here and it landed on runway 34. There are one, two, three runways there. So this one was assigned runway 34 on the left and then it came in into this googly and this, this is where it docked, right about there. There it is, N11. That's the place where it, it uh, moored up. We'll see whether we can get the same one ourselves. Here's Windy, Spokane. Here you can see the wind is coming in, curling up and then heading off up into the north, which makes some very interesting weather. And it says it's 170 degrees, six knots, visibility 10 statute miles, which is good. Clouds broken at 12,000 feet and at 16,000 feet and 24,000 feet. So not doing too bad. Temperature is 19 degrees, they're cooler than we are. Altimeter is 29.85. 2992 is standard uh, barometric pressure, so this is just a little underneath that level. And it says here it is VFR. Here you can see Spokane, and over here there's Coeur d'Alene, that's where I used to drop my people off at and here is the border between Washington and Idaho. 
right here this is the main airport and here over here this is where uh, the Air Force base is located and right up about here somewhere in this vicinity here that's where Phelps Field is located so that's that's the general area that we're working with looking at the runways well, if I had to guess, I would probably say that we would be departing on this runway here, which is the one that we saw the other one departing from on runway 21. So that would be my guess. Going over now to Seattle. Here the wind is a little bit more calmer. It's says it's 190 degrees, six knots, visibility 10 statute miles, clouds few at 1500 feet, scattered 2200, so the cloud is a lot lower over Seattle, broken 7000 feet, broken 20,000 feet, temperature 14 degrees, altimeter 3005, just a little bit above standard. So a little bit more higher pressure over here than it is over in Spokane. But remember, the Rocky Mountains are in between. And looking at the runway, well, this is the runway that the previous flight came in on. This is, this is runway 34 left. So you've got 34 left, 34 right, 34 center. So this is the one that it came in on. I don't know whether we will get the same, but we'll have to plan for something. But it looks like it's going to be that same runway, one of them. And then right here, this is where it actually pulled up. So we'll try to do the same. All right, we've got the information that we need for weather. We know what we're looking at. So let's go in into Simbri. We are Ryanair and we are 186 and we're departing from KGEG and we're going to go to KSEA. We'll look at this in just a moment to, I think that's Portland, but we'll find out in just a moment. Here's our airframe. There's our registration. Flight time is one hour, 15 minutes from gate to gate. Departure runway 21. And it's saying arrival on 16 right. Oh, well, that'll be uh, that's a little different. We are full. And of course we have one ton of freight. And you know what that is, right? Yes, champagne and caviar. <laughs> I'll leave the altitude as auto to see what comes up. It's a straightforward flight route. It's calling for the Temple Waypoint and then it's the Glass Romeo 1 arrival. And there is the route coming across, going down to Seattle, and as Portland International, that's the alternate airport, should things go pear-shaped. All right, let's save the flights and generate the flight plan. Well, we've been given something a little different from the previous flights. There's the origin, there's the destination, there's the alternate, and we've been given flight level 320. Okay, airtime is 48 minutes, there's our block fuel, and there of course is the routing. Here's the flight plan, we're Ryanair 186. There is the flight cruise altitude and there once again is the route. That's the alternate, should things go pear-shaped. We need to know that we're cost index six. 
we'll need to know the average wind of our cruising altitude. Right here is the block fuel. And right there, 2,594 kilograms of fuel for reserve. And the trip and tax is 2,400. No tankering recommended. Here is the route. And this is what I will put down in the description box below so you can follow it at your leisure if you wish. Here we are on page eight for the wind information. We're going to need to know the information for flight level 200, which is 20,000 feet. And it says here that the wind di direction is 228 and it's at 47 knots. And right here, this is for 15,000 feet. And right there is for 10,000 feet. We've got minus 16 at 20,000 feet and minus 3. And according to this, we're going to be looking at some strong winds up aloft. 72 knots there, minus 44, minus 44, minus 45. So we've got some interesting winds aloft and certainly some interesting temperatures. Now here's the wind directions and speed. We depart from here and as you can see we have mainly crosswind but also it looks like it's slightly coming off our front left quarter. And when we get to here then we go down and to land at Seattle. Minus 50, minus 50, minus 49 and some pretty stiff winds at that altitude. Here's the vertical profile. Departure straight up to the top and then the long descent down into Seattle. Right here, this is the tropopause and you can see that it is just above our flight level. Okay, we've got the information we need. Now we can go into Navigraph charts. All right, we click flights, new flights from SimBrief and use the one we just made. Click on that, open the charts list. We're going to need to know the airport position and we're going to try to be right about here just as we saw the other aircraft. I'm going to try to be close to this. That's probably as good a place as any to start from. Over here, we'll need the airport information and we'll need to know the gates, so I'll pin this. If we use the same, here's November 11. This is where the previous flight came in at. We'll have to see whether it's available for us at this North Satellite. And here's the arrival. And we'll have to see how this will come in. We'll be picking, we'll pin that. We're coming in on runway 16 right. Okay, so we'll be ILS category three, and that's the one that we want. So let's have a look at this. I'm also going to Put one in as well, right here, for 16 left. Just in case we are redirected to go into the left one. Uh, sometimes that's what um, P3D does. It brings you into the closest one. 
So we may have some interesting points that we'll have to check with on this. Okay. We have all the information that we need. We've got our roots. So all we have to do now is jump in the aircraft and let's get ourselves prepared. Ah, oh, there you are, Miranda. Do come on in and take your seat in the right seat of Ryanair 186. Welcome aboard. And don't forget, fasten your seat belts. Now, I've already been around and I've kicked the tires and I've made sure that we had a good fill up. We have 5,661 kilograms of fuel on board. And we are here. Now, as near as I could figure it, and I'm looking also on my chart, as near as I could say, we are at stand 24, which is concourse C. Stand 24, which of course is pretty close to where the other one was departing from. Now this is standard P3D default scenery. So the, obviously the gates are not going to match. So if you want to do this with P3D, I chose gate G2, G2, and that put me right here, pretty much where stand 24 of Concourse C would be. And I've been hearing some rumblings so I'm not sure if we're going to have some thunderstorms in the area. We're going to have to watch out for that. And I clean the windows too, so I don't want to get any rain spots on them now, do I? My goodness. Okay. Right, first thing we do, turn on the battery. We have enough voltage to run the fuel pumps and to start the APU. And there's the APU. This is right here. The fault light, there it is. There's the low oil pressure light has just come on. And now the engine gas temperature will start to rise. And once it goes up, there it is. Once it climbs up to its highest point, then it levels off and comes back down. And then we will have 115 volts of power in order to program everything here on the main instrument panel. And coming back down, I'm looking for this blue light to turn on. When this light comes on, then I can switch. There it is. Now I have 115 volts. So now I can turn on the left and the right IRS, which is the GPS system. Turn on the galley. Never know, we might just get a cup of tea. Emergency exit lights. No smoking. Fasten seat belts. Then over here, the left and the right window heat. And then down here, the two electrical hydraulic pumps. The forward service hatch is open and the equipment, that's the air stairs, are down. Then over here, I'm going to turn on the APU bleed, turn on the packs and listen. And there is the air conditioning coming through to cool down the entire cabin. So, turn on the steady light and now Everybody on the ground knows that we're in here and we are getting ready to set things up. Right, now that we're set, we're ready to program the FMC. So we check that the nav data is correct. 
and its end date. Program is not showing any errors. Position initialization, and of course we're starting out at KGEG. I'm not going to be able to put the gate in. It looks like I'm going to have to go down to the next page. And there we are. If I look at the coordinates for 23 through 26, it's 47, 37, 4, 117, 32, and 3. We've got it right there. So I'm going to put that in, and there's our start position. Go to root, so we start out again, KGEG. And we're going to go to KSEA. We're Ryanair, so RYR, and we're number 186. Put that in. Go to next page. And looking at the flight plan, we go direct to Temple, T E M P L. T E M P L. And that would be the top one. And then that is it. So we activate it, execute. Then go to departures. And here where is where we need to tune in to ATIS. Now I was asked to show the radios down here. So here's the, the radio on my side and it has a standby frequency and it has an active frequency. Below it I have the navigation which again has standby and then active. And then there is a radio switch and then down here I have uh, eight. ADF frequencies. Over there I have another radio. This is na uh, radio 2 and this is navigation 2. And again they have standby frequencies that I can program in. Now since the Spokane ATIS is 124.32, so 124 and 32 and then all I do is I push this. Spokane International Airport Information. Foxtrot 2333. Zulu wind 156 at 10. Visibility greater than 20 miles. Sky condition. Ceiling 12000 broken. Temperature 19er 2.15. Altimeter 1012. Landing and departing. Runway 21. VFR aircraft, say direction of flight. All aircraft read back hold short instructions. Advise controller on initial contact. You have Foxtrot. Right, now I've just switched because I, I've transferred the frequency. Now this happens to be the ground frequency, so we'll be talking to those very shortly. So that is how I program and how I deal with the radio. So we have Foxtrot and it is runway 21, so I'm going to put 21 in there. and execute that go to departures arrivals now here i'm going to cheat a little bit i know that the original plan called for 16 right i'm going to go in one six left i have a feeling that one six left is going to be the the one that we will actually get and then i'm going to go with the pae Transition right there. Execute that. Now I'm going to go to legs. Now I'm going to switch to plan. And then I'm going to go through each of the steps on here just to see how this works. There's the PAE going down and then go straight down onto the main runway itself. So it's a pretty straightforward run. Good. Click back. Right, I'm going to put the weather on uh, on this one and double click for data. Put terrain here, double click for data and click to anti-skid. We're going to be flying at 320, so I'm going to put 32,000 feet in here 
I know that this is always assigned by air traffic control, but you know, we're Ryanair 186. We do what we want. <laughs> then up here I'm going to put 32,000 feet in this as well. Now our landing uh, altitude, 432 feet. So that's close enough to 450. So 450. And that will be the landing altitude over there. Since we're departing on runway 21, it'll be 211 degrees for our course setting, so 211. And shall I do yours, Miranda? Okay, thank you. 211 degree course setting here. All right, good. Now that we've got that, we're ready to complete the program. Right, we have reserves of 2,594. The trip and taxi is 2,400. That comes to 4,994 kilograms, close enough to five. So I'm gonna put five in for that. Reserves, 2.6, 2.6. Cost index is six, and we are, our flight altitude today is 3200, so 320 right there. Cruise wind is 227 at 55, 227 at 55. Transition altitude in the USA is 180 and double click all of that and it makes the calculation execute that n1 limit 19 degrees is what it is outside today take off we will be flaps 10 double click gives us the center of gravity and the 4.77 on the trim wheel and then here i'm going to do one click on each of these and it will give me the value of b1 rotate and lift off speed right i put the 144 into here now there we go and i flight director on flight director on over there v nav button l nav button and we have a good flight plan there we go and now i'm going to there we go flight continuity light went out Okay, so turn on the VOR switches and this is where I'm going to now make a couple of things here. I'm going to put in on the navigation because I'm coming in on 16 left that is going to be 110.3 so 110 point3 activate that. But in case we're moved to 16 right, then that's 110.75. So 110 and 75. And all I have to do is push that and it switches it just that quick. Easy peasy, yes? All right. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the radio decision height, which is 176. Now that's going to be the decision height for landing on runway 16 left. Now, descent forecast. Transition level is 180. I need the information 200, 150, 100. The Q&H. And our destination is 1018, 1018. And then the information coming from page eight, 
is 22847. 22847. And then 24033, 24033, and 264 at 16, 264 at 16. Execute that, do the fix, K-S-E-A. Then we want, and you see it shows runway six, one six left, do a four mile, do a 10 mile, and do a 30 mile radius. And then I'm going to turn on the TCAS. Well, I did think that I heard thunder in the area, and look at this. Look at that big weather cell out here. And that's just out that way. Fortunately, we're going to be going in this direction. But that is a big weather cell. My goodness me. So, checklist. Fuel is on board, windows are locked, seatbelt signs are on, door lights are out. MCP programmed and checked, MCP takeoff thrust bugs, CDU pre-flight is correct, rudder airline trim is programmed. Now, since we need to go out there, we need to go back and our nose to the right and our tail to the left. Anti-collision light is now going on. Right, now I need to contact the, the tower and get our clearance. Spokane, clearance delivery, Ryanair 186, ready to copy IFR clearance to Seattle Tacoma International. Ryanair 186 is cleared to Seattle Tacoma International Airport as filed. Fly runway heading, climb and maintain. 12000 departure frequency as 123.75 squat 5016. Ryanair 186 cleared to Seattle Tacoma International Airport as filed. Fly runway heading, climb and maintain. 12000 departure on 123.75 score 5016. Ryanair 186 red back correct. Contact ground on 121.9er. Spokane ground. Ryanair 186 with hotel ready to taxi IFR. Ryanair 186 taxi to and hold short at runway 21 via taxiway Tango 6 Alpha Alpha 1 contact tower on 118.3 when ready. Taxi to and hold short runway 21 via taxiway Tango 6 Alpha Alpha 1 Ryanair 186. Right, I have the Navigraph charts now working and you can see them to my right. I'm going to zoom in here so that you can see where we are and where we need to go to get to the active runway. Right, I'm going to request the ground for a pushback with our nose to the right. And which engine would you like to start today, Miranda? The number one and number two, left or right? You'd like to start number two engine? All right, so I'm switching to engine number two. Okay, now. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead. We've been cleared for pushback and start. They want the tail to our left. Roger that. Ready to push. Tail to the left. Park brake's off. Parking brake is off. Air conditioning is now being switched off in order that we can Brakes put released. all the juice to the engine. Switching engine number two, and start valve has opened, and now that you can see the N2 is spinning up. When this gets to 24, I'll introduce the fuel. 
Yeah, the weather is certainly different out there today. There's 24, bringing in the fuel. Now I'm going to look for this to start to build up. There, there's the temperature building up very nicely. I'm going to look for the low oil pressure light to go out. Good, it did. We should be able to hear the engine any minute now. And there, there's the engine. So next I'm going to look for 115 volts up here. 115, we have switching to engine number one. The start valve has opened on one. Here you can see the N2 is spinning up. And push back complete, parking brake please. Parking brake is set. And set. this gets to 24, there we go, bringing in the fuel. Looking for the engine gas temperature now to start spinning up. All right, steering pin is disconnected. Watch for the slip release from guidance on your left. Have a good flight. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, the engine gas temperature is igniting, is building up. Now looking for the low oil pressure light. There, it's gone off. And we're getting a good start on engine number one. Looking for 115 volts coming up on here for engine one. There it is. Now we have both engines producing, and so I'm going to now switch to the main engines. I'm going to turn on the air conditioning again, turn off the APU bleed, turn off the APU. I'm also now going to turn on the three taxi lights Everything is checked, looking good. So generators are on. Probe heat is now on. Anti-ice not required at the present. Isolation valves correct. Engine start levers idle D10. Flight deck door closed and locked. Recall is checked. Flight controls checked. Going to Flaps 10. The flaps are in transit. And we have green lights. Stabilizer trim is correct. Auto brake is RTO. Speed brake lever down and detent. Ground equipment is clear. Verify the takeoff speeds. One correction to make. One, four, five. And now we are ready to taxi out there to the active. So we'll go out. T6, A and A1. So we go out here to T6 and then A and all the way down. All right, attendance, we're about to move. Hang on tight. <laughs> there we go then. You know, this is quite, quite detailed airport scenery for default. We don't have any kamikazes. Alright, I turn up here. This is the Tango 6 intersection. And 
then turn left here onto Alpha. And the clouds are moving fairly fast up above. Can you see the, the shadow of the clouds moving across there? Not bad though for P3D, just the shape is just about right too. And that big storm cell, wherever it is, is all over there. And there is some, there's a lot of activity. It'll be interesting to see what kind of weather we have to climb through to get to our altitude. is out in that general direction so looks like Idaho is the one that's underneath it when we get to Seattle today, Veranda? I don't know if I should have brought my umbrella with me. Starting the clock and 
everything is reset so now we'll move out into the center and take off
seatbelt signs are off, so you know what that means. That means they're serving champagne and caviar back in the main cabin. So why don't you nip back there and enjoy some of that wonderful cuisine. And we have French champagne. None of that uh, other plonk, you know. We've got the good stuff here. And as soon as we're on our approach and descent into Seattle, I'll give you a shout so that you can come and help me land, okay? See you in a few minutes.
we're coming up on Zedek, Z ZK, and we need to be 7,000 feet or above at that point. We did have some IFR conditions that we ran into. We had no visibility at all in the cloud. And it looks like we will have to pass through some cloud to get down to the airport ahead of us. So it will be interesting. But once we get to ZK, then we will be actually on a final approach. Right, going to flaps two.
to land any minute now. So engine start switchers, continuous. Altimeter set, cabbage are set. Secure, speed brake lever is on, landing gear. We'll go down in just a moment. Right. Landing gear is down. We're on the glide slope. Pacifica 10 minor 3. 
This is uh, Airport Scenery is made by Driswicky Design. They are the ones who produce this wonderful detailed scenery. There's aircraft all over the place. I should show you this. Position in hold. Pacifica. Niner. Six one. Niner. Going around. Hold it. Hold six one five. Look at the detail on this. Approach on one one nine point two. And there's plenty of traffic. There's taking off and somebody coming in to land. Wonderful detail there. Wonderful detail. Beautiful. And 
Bíblia. There we go. Parking brake is on. And lights are off. Shut down. Okay. Stairs are going down. Hatch is opening up. Right, I'm going to start the cleanup. All right, everything is looking good, pretty much off. All right. And APU off, battery off, shutdown is complete. Well, Miranda, we made it. Actually, it was a pretty straightforward flight. Apart from the cloud, and there were a few bumps in that cloud, and the possibility of icing at those low temperatures, we did all right. And Ryanair is now very proud to park next to all of these Delta Airlines and Alaska Airlines in Seattle. How's that for a first? <laughs> and here we are, N17. Well, I hope that we did you proud. I enjoyed the flight immensely. I've done this flight, so I know what this is like. I've done it in my own aircraft, not in a jet. Although, yes, I have been in jets. I have done passengers, but very few. Most of the time, I like to fly myself, probably just like you do. Right, thank you for the suggestion. Do appreciate it, Miranda. I wish you all the very best out there in Spokane and hope that the weather is going to be good for you and that you have a wonderful summer. And I'll see you on another flight and everyone else I'll see you next time for a flight on Ryanair 186. Bye, everybody.